So e-commerce can be a little difficult. It can be very expensive if anyone's tried to do something with Shopify and have someone develop that for them and know that the thousands of dollars it can take to do that. Uh, it, it can be a very expensive nightmare to do. Um, the, the big three really are WooCommerce, Shopify, and Big Commerce, and to a lesser degree, maybe Magento as another system, which is very common for when it comes to building an online shop. WooCommerce is the biggest one in town, Shopify following very closely behind it. Uh, WooCommerce is part of um, a WordPress, so it's a, a shop you would use in WordPress. There's other shops you can use, but WooCommerce really is the one that everyone kind of uses. Now, WooCommerce needs you to build a WordPress website in order to make it happen, right? Then you need to install the WooCommerce plugin. You need to configure it, set up your shop, set up your um, shipping, set up your, your payment platforms, add your products, add your, add your collections and your different categories and all that. And then there's a lot of themes that help to make it look good. So there's different ways you can tweak it to make it look better on your particular WordPress theme. If you're using something like Elementor or Divi, you can sort of you know hand build all those different parts of the screen to make it look really good. Um, but it, it is a big learning curve and, and it is for a lot of people a really hard thing to get hold of because, well, let's face it, none of us really got into business to be web designers. We got into business to sell the thing that we want to sell, right? Another option then could be something like big commerce. And it starts at $29.95 per month US. Um, it is a little complex to set up, but it is a real all-in-one system in the same way that Shopify might be, or that you think of something like Wix, building a website on Wix is an all-in-one program. Uh, you don't have to get web hosting. It's all included with the program. Um, it has some limited templates that allow you to you know, present your shop in the best way possible. Um, but ultimately, it really relies upon people really knowing the system enough to be able to tweak those templates or build a template from scratch that's going to look really good to match your brand values and, and the kind of look and feel you're going for. There are many add-ons. There are lots of options, just like WordPress, where you've got tons of things you can plug into it. Same thing with big commerce, tons of plugins that you can use to extend functionality. The plugins to things like um, Australia Post um, shipping rates, uh, things that calculate a lot of different um, shipping calculations for you, even right down to um, you know adding coupons and, and how they work and, and timing those out. There's a lot of additional things you can do. And it is you know th that all-in-one platform approach. It does feel like it's a little easier to use than something like WordPress with WooCommerce. Um, the more you pay, though, the more support you're going to get. Big Commerce doesn't just come with, um, you know, ultimate premium support. It doesn't really kick in until you get to around that fifty to seventy dollars plus per month, where you're getting really decent support with someone, you know, basically sitting there and chatting you through the different features and the different uh, problems you might be coming up with. Shopify, one of those real big dogs in the room, starts at 29 US a month. It's a bit more simple to set up. It's 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 um has enough in its free templates that really allow you to get a feel for how to sell things, and particularly in the beauty, skin care, uh, in in clothing kind of range. Uh, anything from you know um the, 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 the typical the very pretty things, scented oils, scented candles, handmade soaps, um, a lot of creator stuff is really good on Shopify. It, it is relatively simple to use. Uh, uh, like aside from WooCommerce on WordPress, this is very much easier than that. Um, but there are limited templates that are included for free. And what we tend to find is the cost goes up dramatically when you start using nicer templates from other developers. It has lots and lots of add-ons and options, just like WordPress, just like big commerce. There's tons more stuff. And like them too, the more you pay, the more support you get. So if you're someone who's really starting from scratch, Shopify might feel like it's a little bit hard to get going with unless you've got a lot of time. And, and with these platforms, it's like building a website or understanding social media or working with any system. Um, you're either going to spend lots of money or you're going to spend lots of time. You spend money to save you the time. You spend the time to save you the money. So it depends on what you want to do, whether you want to spend lots of time or lots of money to build that store for you. This solution I'm going to show you today is called Big Cartel. And it's a bit different to the others. It is an all-in-one built-in platform where you can create an entire website out of it, um, but it does have limitations. And those limitations are in the form of themes, although there seems to be quite a lot of them. Um, and in terms of some of the features you can have in there, there's no plugins, for instance, which are going to go beyond what the functionality of Big Cartel does on its own. This is the kind of website you will build for a, for a shop. If <coughs> Excuse me. 
you're in the early stages of what you're doing. You don't need to spend twenty to twenty five thousand dollars building a comprehensive shop in WooCommerce or going to Shopify and spending ten to fifteen thousand dollars for the perfect shop. What you need is the shop that's going to work for you, the shop that you're going to be able to launch with. Uh, we call that the um, in in the agile development process. It's called a minimum viable product. It's the minimum you can possibly get that makes it viable for you to run a test or to launch. And ultimately, what you want to do is launch. You need to launch more than anything else. What you don't need to do is to just continually going around in circles, constantly learning and never really executing on the idea or ever launching your shop. This helps you to get to that launch point much, much quicker. So Big Cartel starts for free for up to five products. So that doesn't mean five variations. That means five individual products. So you could sell a t-shirt, a singlet, a dress, a pair of shorts and a pair of pants, and then have multiple sizes within each of those. So in essence, you've got maybe you know 50 different products because you may have 10 sizes per, per garment or 10 colors per garment that you can then use as variations on that. So if you only sell five things, five actual you know physical things, then this could be really helpful for you. It also could be helpful for you to sell things like five different um, five different kinds of booking with you, even though you can't really get the booking time in there, but it could be the way you use for people to pay for it. Now, one of the big differences between Big Cartel and just about everyone else is that before you can add your own domain name on, it's like myshop.com.au or whatever you're going to have, they usually require a payment. They usually require a commitment for you at a certain amount per month or per year or something like that to add a domain name. Big Cartel doesn't require that. They allow you to add your own domain name from this free layer going upwards. And it gives you those unlimited variations on each one of your products. Like I said, you can have a t-shirt, but you can have 15 different sizes in that t-shirt that are available in a combination of you know 25 different colors in that t-shirt, as long as it's just that t-shirt. So it does give you a little bit of a, a, a little bit of work with, but it does only also let you have one photo per product at the free level. This is where you go, oh, what's the catch? That's the catch. Only one photo per product. Now, for most of us, that's going to be enough. One photo of the product with maybe five fragrances of the particular hands, um, the particular handmade soap that we're selling, that will be enough. The fact that it gives you a free site with your free domain name lets you start the process, lets you test it out to see if this is actually something that people want and that you can sell. It lets you at least start promoting on social media, a place for people to go and buy your stuff. So that's a great start. You can then scale that up. So for instance, if you, um, you know, it, it, as I said, it has one photo per product, it does include, and this is the other bit, it includes you to take payments both in person and online. So it connects through either PayPal or through Stripe are the two payment methods. No others, no Square, none of that, just PayPal and just Stripe. Now, the ability to take payments in person means you can bring up your website and process the payment on the website when someone's there. So if you're in a market stall or something, you don't need a square car reader. You just go, okay, flip around your iPad and they put in their card numbers or you, you do that. That allows you then to take an in-person one. Or the online is they just find your site and they buy it themselves. You can add discount codes. You can add promos. And you can have some custom shipping in there. So it's a bit limited. You can't have calculated shipping. It's you either have flat rates or you have something which splits you between say, um, it's going to cost $5 for this t-shirt to be shipped. But if you ship it with other things that you're buying from the same site, it's going to cost you $1 to ship it. And then if they ordered say 10 different items, then it's each one of those is $1 to ship together in the one parcel. So $10 all up. So you do get to play with the custom shipping a bit. They just released a beta feature, which is um, what we call shipping profiles. And shipping profiles allow you to say, well, there's a click and collect, pick it up in person profile. There's a within Australia profile. There's a New Zealand profile or an everywhere else profile that gives you the basis for which for people to select their shipping. Where you want a shipping to? Australia, great. It brings up the default for that. And then in each item, you can specify whether the shipping's a bit more for that. Let's say, for instance, you sell a scented candle, which is going to be around about 250 grams. So there's going to be a certain cost for that. But if someone orders a candle that's a 500 gram candle, it's going to cost more to send that. 
So you can actually then in that particular item, have the shipping be a higher amount. That will be a different candle. So you're going to use one of your five different products to do that, but it's okay because you can spread those out. When you start to scale up and go beyond those five different things, and that's when you're doing you know, your one kilo candle, your 50, 50 gram candle, your 250 gram candle, or whatever it is you're selling, then you start to move up into their more pro things. So this is their platinum plan, which is for 50 products, $9.99 US a month. So that gives you five products photos. So 50 products all up, but five photos per product and all the features we got from the previous ones, so all those same features as well. So that 50 products really then opens up for you to have a much bigger store. Plus, you imagine that 50 products with three, four, five, 10 sizes per product. You've got a lot of scope to build a lot of variations in there. And when the five different photos, you go, well, here's five of the colors of this t-shirt. Here's five of the, um, the, 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 the sizes of the candle. So, okay, you can start to split up and go this candle, which is a lemongrass scent comes in 50 gram, 100 gram, 250 gram. You can have a different price point for each of those different sizes under one product. So you imagine 50 products goes a heck of a long way. And then you can go up to the really big Kuna, like 500 products, five photos per product still, all the features that you get in the free in the 995 version at 20 bucks a month US. That brings it for the most high level version of it is like $9 a month under what it costs for Shopify or big commerce or any of those programs. So this is a much, much cheaper one. Now, why is that cheaper? Well, it's a little less flexible than the others. Now, be sure that this is not the ultimate shopping platform. It's not, it doesn't do everything. Shopify is amazing. WooCommerce is amazing. Big Commerce is amazing. Magento is amazing. This is the beginner's one. This is the one you're going to start your shopping journey with. You may not end there in two years time when you've scaled up and you're selling $10,000 worth of product a month. You may want something a bit more robust. You can move off this one onto another one. This is the, the shop you use to get started. So what I'm going to do is flip over to another in here and we're going to set up our own big cartel account. So I'm just going to start here with opening your store. Um, we're going to go for the free. So there you go, the lineup, the 999, the, tw the, the 1999, and it gives you all those different options. We're going to sign up for free to begin with because you're going to get sell one thing, I think. So I'm going to put in my, um, my email address to start that up. So let's just say I use um, info, that one. Um, let's get a password in there. You can't see that, thankfully. Oh, we're going to call this one InfoClick. And that's the URL it's going to give you straight away off the bat, infoclick.bigcartel.com, which is not too bad, actually, as a, as a domain name. That's all right. I, I can work with that. Um, but you may want your own custom domain. We can do that as we get further into this. So I'm going to sign up. I'm going to pop into my email address, get the link for that. Um, and it's already going to start us here. So it's going to add that to my last pass. And it gives us then the order of which we then start things. So it's giving us a bunch of data. We can use our stats in there just as a way around this dashboard. And then you get like a list of your orders, the list of your products that you put in there, any discounts you may have offered. So you might be running a discount for two weeks over the Mother's Day period, for instance, a pre-Mother's Day period um, for specific items. You can run those all in there. And in account, this is where you're going to be putting all your sort of your, your settings for stuff. So let's follow the getting started checklist and get this show on the road. So the first thing we want to do is add a product. So let's go and add our first product. It's going to give us lots of tool tips. They're going to pop up and annoy us like this one. So I'm just going to uh, go through these. It's basically telling you how to add a product. So I'm going to do it here, add a product. I'm going to call this product. Um, let's call it sandalwood um, natural candle. I'm into uh, candles today. So I'm just going to look for on Google, um, I don't know, candle. A photo of a candle that I'm going to use in there. Here's a few in here. So I might take the June 22nd one because it looks like really nice. Really nice packaging. That's gorgeous, isn't it? These are, um, go to the Australia site. Come on, take me wherever I want to go. Here we go. All right, November 15th is going to be our candle. So we're going to call it, let's pick up that uh, image. I'm just going to use that as an example for my image in here. So add my image. Remember, I get one for the free account. Don't get any more, just the one. You get five for the paid accounts. Then I can say with the scent of spirituality, 
going to make up some rubbish here. You'll relax into your day with this beautifully um, packaged candle of 500 grams in weight. You can write whatever you want in there. Now it's going to ask me to do a category. So I don't have to do a category, but I'm going to do one as well because we're not just going to sell scented candles. So I add my category, call it candles, save. I got a category called candles. It adds it now to the categories. I'm going to make this active for now and give it a price. Its base price is going to be, let's just say $20. Now I can add my options here. I can have grouped options and individual options. What I'm going to have over here is, so product options, I'm going to have a group called size and then I'm going to have another group. Um, so I can have a, a, a size can be small, medium, and then I can add a large in there as well. And what this allows me to then do is to group my options together. So I've got sizes in those. So what I want to do is in the small, medium, large, I can have then the price differences. So the medium is going to be 22, large is going to be 25. So we've priced the small one at 20, but we've got the option to go for different sizes. So now I've set that, I can then go shipping. How much is this going to cost to ship? Now, the very basics of shipping um, without calculating anything, without taking feeds from Australia Post or anything like that, or DHL, or I don't know, whoever the uh, toll, any of the other logistics and shipping companies. So we're just going to add shipping for Australia. First one that comes up. So if I'm sending this item on its own, um, I will have already calculated and gone to Australia Post and tested out that it's going to cost me, okay, it's going to cost me $8 to send this on its own. Whoops, not 80 cents, $8. So eight bucks is sent on its own. But if I'm going to be packaging this up to sell with other things, well, I'm going to be able to save a bit more across the whole order. So if with other things, I'm going to say it's going to cost $4. So if they order five different candles, each candle will only cost $4 each to ship as opposed to $8. Because of the, the that's the way that shipping works. The more you do, the lower the cost gets per item. You can add a US tax code, but you're not really working within UX, US, so you don't really need to do that. I'm going to now save my product. My product is now in. So it says, yes, you've added a new product. Now I might want to add some more options here. Remember, see, I've got the size. I also want another group. My other group is going to be fragrance. So in that fragrance, the first one could be sandalwood. I can do a scent of um, orange blossom. Trying to think of all the fragrances of around my house, eucalyptus, um, and then maybe what, lavender? So I've now got both a size option and a fragrance option. Now, what I can do in here is go this small sandalwoods, medium sandalwood, 22. What it's done is matched all those, but I need to then start pricing everything else out. So I can have like a premium set of, um, of, of fragrances as well that may cost more, but I'm going to stick to just this, the, the price guide based on the size. So the small and medium sandalwood, say 20, 22, and then we got the large sandalwood, 25. So all the small ones are going to be 20, all the mediums are going to be 22. So I just need to correct that one. Uh, small 20, medium 22, again, small lavender, medium lavender, 22. Then we get to the large guys. So they're 25. This one needs to be 25 as well. I can really set them as anything I want. Um, but let's just, for the sake of consistency, go $25 for each of those. Now, when someone goes into that product, they'll be able to make those. Now, I can set something on sale. I can say, hey, it's on sale, and then add different prices to them. But at the moment, we're not going to put it on sale. We're just going to have it as is. Save. And then we're going to go back to the dashboard and see what our next thing is. So I've added a product. Now we add shipping profiles. And this is where, for instance, we set defaults for where the shipping is going to be. So in this, this is in the account section that gives us all the different places where shipping profiles, which is what we're about to do. Uh, we can then edit what's in place. So let's do that. We're going to edit the shipping profile and go a default shipping rate. 
So we go, okay, the shipping rate for standard. Yes, yeah, so we're going to say the first item is going to be a minimum of $8. Um, each additional item is going to be four. This is the default, remember, that will be automatically added to everything that's in our shop unless we override it. So this is for everyone. And then we go into each particular product. We can override that if we want. So if something's a bit heavier, we can add more shipping costs to it. If it's um, a minimum buy of three, we just make sure that our shipping cost is enough to cover the weight of those three. Next day delivery might be one that you might going to go, you know, we're not going to have that in Australia because I don't know if you've noticed, but, you know, getting things next day is not an easy thing to do unless you're in Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane, really, or maybe Adelaide or Perth as well. But it's, it's, it's very, very uncommon. So I'm going to get rid of that one because I don't want to offer it because I can't really guarantee it. As someone who lives in a regional area, I can tell you now, it's not something that's going to happen. But then there's also click and collect, customer pickup. We can actually call it that, click and collect. Because that's a that's a term that we're very very um, common with. So we can say customer picks up from the shop um, at you know thirty four Smith Street. Oh, I get this right, um, Carumban. So then someone can pick that up for free. That does not going to again cost them anything. So that's my standard shipping, and I can set that for a particular country, Australia. And that's the standard shipping and the standard pickup or click and collect or shipping that I'm going to have for the Australian area. So every time I create a, uh, another product, that will automatically be added as the default shipping. I can then, as I said, override that for specific pro products, but I probably won't need to. Then I can go down and then set specific shipping profiles for specific products. So that one I don't want to do for now because I can do that within the product itself. I don't need to do that in here for now. So let's turn that on. So we've got the shipping rates that will actually go across our products and we go back to our dashboard again. So, so far we've built a product. We've now built a shipping profile. Now we're going to connect a payment processor. And this is where you can choose between PayPal or Stripe. None of the others, you don't get, um, as I said before, you don't get the option of using Square Payments. Um, as nice as that would be, um, it's not offered in here but you've got these two. Remember, this is the shop that's going to get you started, not the ultimate shop that's going to make you a millionaire. This is the one you're going to be able to test whether people actually want the shop from you. So in the get paid section, we go, okay, Stripe allows you to accept debit and credit card. Okay, that's good. And it says, yeah, PayPal also lets you do that. So that's awesome. So we're now able to do that. So let's edit the payment options to see what people can use and we'll set them up. So we can go this Stripe. Now I've got a Stripe account that I can connect to. So for as an example, I will connect through to my Stripe account and set it up. So if it's under that one, I think it's under that one, but we'll find out any second if that's the one, maybe. That one. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Let's have a look. Yep. I don't know why I'm using Bluetooth, but let's just uh, roll with it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's just gone to try and do something with my phone, but that's not really what I was trying to do. So let's cancel that out. Don't allow. Try again. Let's try. Uh, okay, I'll send up. It's sending me a um an, an approval thing. So I've got to send it to my phone. So verifying my identity through my phone. I previously set this up. So I'm going to allow that through my phone. Now it should. This, um, out of the way, it's just now verifying, connecting to the phone. Should be working. It's trying to connect. So normally that would connect. Let's just say we've already done that. We're going to pop out of there because um, that step is something you will do yourself based upon your account. So whether it's PayPal or Stripe, um, I just couldn't get a Bluetooth connection between my phone and my um and 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 my browser so it just wouldn't work at the time but normally you wouldn't need to do that so we're back in here now back to our dashboard we've connected our payment process let's just say now we get to design the shop and this is where we have a little bit of fun with design and the way that things are laid out so down here we see that it's already picked a lunar theme now we can pick other themes of that uh, we say where's our shop locator i might want to edit my shop info and say where i actually am i'm not in that time zone i'm actually in which one? This one, that time zone. 
I've got the Australian dollar as my currency. I'm in Australia. I can now then add a custom domain. And this is where you can already own a domain to connect it. Or if you buy a new one through Google domains, they then connect it all through for you. But I've got a domain I already own. I can add that through and just follow the steps for that. As I said before, the free version lets you do this. This is like the, the very big difference between these guys and everyone else that you can actually do this through the free version. So once we've got, okay, our shop info is lined up, let's go for the design. Let's see what we can do with the design. So it's going to give us a very basic one with well, like just with the one product we happen to add in there. It might be helpful if we added in more project pro, pro, um, products because you know then we'll have more to show on here. But let's just work with this for now just to see what works. Now we can add a header image. We can have a repeating background image. There's a slideshow we can have there of different products or different images. For now though, I just want to play with some real basic stuff like the background. Let's just say I want the background of my store to be this. So let's select that and see what it looks like. Let's refresh and it's now got that, that pink coral color as the background. Um, if I want a secondary background, which is um, another section of the screen will be another color, that looks fine to me. The primary text looks fine to me. I'll make my secondary text white though. Let's bring that up to white. So it's going to update it. Look at the secondary text. You can see that there in that little menu. Um, header text, your yeah, product hover over. There's a color that happens. Um, things like buttons. So if there's any buttons on here that you want to click, um, we can say there's sort of a button background. For me, this all looks fine to me. I don't really mind that, but I might want to change my font. So I can do that over here. So let's just say I want Bevan. Bevan's a big, thick, chunky one. There you go. It's probably not the one you want to have as a, as a pretty scented candle one, but we might be able to find a much more you know nice, um, more delicate one, perhaps. Uh, something like, we're going to avoid Helvetica because that's what everyone seems to go. Merryweather's quite nice. There you go. So Merryweather's quite pretty for that. And we're going to have a secondary font where I'm going to use maybe Montserrat as my um, as my secondary font. Down we go, back up, back up, back up. There we go. So your secondary font is going to be things like, um, in this case, it'll be like the uh, like a heading that's a subheading. So now we've changed that. We can then start to change things like an announcement text, which shows on the top of every page. So this is where you add something like um, Happy Mother's Day. 10% off all this week. And that's just a little announcement. It doesn't give them a code or anything like that. Let's have a look at the top now. Happy Mother's Day, 10% off all this week. Um, whilst it's under maintenance mode, you can have like a little shop. Uh, at the moment, this one's under maintenance mode because I haven't set it to go live, but you could have that little message saying, hey, we're just um, under maintenance at the moment or we're, we're just building our site. Please check it back again soon. If you want to change that announcement text and have nothing, you just simply just have nothing in there. And then it goes away. Or we can go say, for instance, it's opening week. Welcome to our new store. It can be any old announcement you want to have up there. We'll now show up the top. And as we keep going down the side, you can see like how things are going to show out. So whether you want um, you know, two things across. So this one allows to have to have two, but we say navigation on, let's have four across the page. So it might make each one smaller. We have a featured product set. So you can have 12 of them, they slide through. Um, and how do you want to feature those products through newest? Or you can go by top selling. So the things that are top selling in there, it'll then reorder that featured products area. Now, remember, we've only got one, one product in here so far, so we don't have all that show out. But for products per page, how many you want to show? Do you want things to be in a square or do you want them to fit to a square? So I usually like to crop things because um, if it tries to fit it, it'll squish it and make it all out of, um, out of ratio. Uh, you can have the product, you know, the rollover. So instead of in the product list, having everything underneath it like it was, now I have to roll over to see it. So if you prefer less um, image, uh, less text on your page, you want to have that sort of look, you can change that over. But for me, I like to have a little bit of um, information on there because I don't think anyone should actually have to hover over something to get a price. Um, the currency sign you can change. So you can get a currency code with sign. So what this will do is then add, you know, it's got AUD in there. So you then make it clear to people who land on your site from other countries that this is in Australian dollars. Um, but if you're only selling to people in Australia, you can just go the currency sign without the code. In the product page, your image can be on the left or the right. Generally, we're used to them being on the right or left. It doesn't really make a big difference. 
And you can have things like your, your related product. You can do a product search if you like, add in that. Your share button to Facebook. We want to add all these. Twitter, probably not so much. Twitter, Pinterest, maybe. Facebook URL could be, I don't know, HTTPS. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash, there's one of mine. And so the Facebook share thing, once I go into this product and I go in here to look at what it has, it's got a Facebook, it's got to share it to Facebook that will now be able to share it and point back to my Facebook URL. And then you can have an Instagram one in there as well. So I can go, uh, let's go Instagram.com and my Instagram is AU. So as I go to share it now, it'll have the share, but also down the bottom, it's also now showing my Facebook, my Instagram, and whatever other socials you have in there within reason. So Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr are the only ones you have. Now, if you've got a TikTok as well, it doesn't allow you to add in extra ones. That's one of the limitations that comes up with it being a limited platform. Remember, we're not building the million dollar shop. We're building the, the, the one that's going to get you started until you've got enough money to build the million dollar shop. Now, if you look at all this and just go, hmm. It's all a bit boring for me. I don't really like this that much. You can take a look at some other themes over here and you can go, now this lunar one is the one we're currently working with. Um, if you use really pretty photos and all that, yes, it could work really nicely for you, but generally you don't have to do all that. You don't have to necessarily work with all that. Um, you can then start choosing themes such as roadie. So if I click on roadie, and go and use the theme, it's going to take out all my customizations and show me what it now looks like under roadie. So it's a little bit more of a, you know, a bit more rough and ready. It's not the prettiest thing. But if we go back to the front page, it's got a different look to it altogether. So this could be good for a tech page or it could be good for a, um, a very, um, you know, selling things that aren't necessarily um, household related. Uh, we can go to something a bit more comic-y with a netizen, Zebu, lunch break. Let's have a look at ones that tend to be very popular on here I've noticed are things like back a bit I think it was um this one the Tanya Nefertari they use that theme and it will give us now a version of that theme with your stuff so you might go oh yeah that's more the look I'm looking for something like that and then I can go okay let's go and set do the settings on this one so it's reset the fonts to Montserrat which we're happy with Let's put an announcement text of welcome to our shop, 10% off this week only. Let's put that in, make sure it shows at the top. Bang, there it is at the top there. Uh, we can then add in you know, all the color options we want to do that we normally do. But now we can start to bring in things like welcome images. So I've wanted a nice little welcome image in here. I've got to kind of look for something which is going to look good. Um, what images have I got? They're going to look great up the top apart from photos of myself, which I seem to have an unusual amount of. Let's see. It's from all my social media of the past week. Let's just get something that isn't me. I know that this is um, a desktop background, so it's not going to be exactly what we're after, but you give you an idea. So this welcome image here can be like your big header image that you can then in the middle of it, say for instance, have um, something like a, like a, like a, a message. So if I go to Canva and quickly just draw together one, so let's just go something which is around. Now, I don't know what the size of this area is, but I'm just going to give it a rough guess and say there's about a thousand wide by about oh, 200, let's make it about 300 deep. Give us this shape. Then I'm going to add in a background. Uh, let's just say you know, this is a nice background and I'm going to put a message in the middle of it. So I'm going to put in there, my awesome shop. Change that to the matching font, which is Montserrat. Which is similar to Montserrat Classic. That's the one I'm looking for. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, 36. And then going to save that. So save this as download, as a PNG. Pop back into my shop. And not that one, move this one out. Replace that with the one I want. And here it is, this one, loading, loading, loading. And now I'm going to have my header the way I wanted it to. My awesome shop, there you go. 
So I might want to fiddle around, make that a bit smaller and that, have different colors, whatever it needs to be. But I can have my own header there rather than having to have the one that they've provided, which was none. They didn't actually provide one at all. Um, I had a question come through from Kelly who asked, can you add this shop to Instagram? No, you can't add this one to Instagram. Um, Instagram only works with certain partner uh, areas and the partners are things like Shopify, uh, Big Commerce, WooCommerce, those kind of ones. So this one you can't add to Instagram, I'm afraid. That's again where the limitations start to come. Um, you can add this one to Facebook shop though, because Facebook shop doesn't necessarily require you to have a partner integration, but Instagram does. So you can't just add any old site to um, Instagram, it has to be one of their partner integrations for now. That could change as Instagram becomes more flexible like Facebook's is. But yeah, thank you for asking that because it is a very important differentiator. If you want that automated shopping connection with Insta, you're going to have to use one of the big guys. So your, your, your Shopify's, your WooCommerce, your BigCommerce, Magento, those kind of guys that have got the much um, deeper integrations. And that all comes down to um, the platform themselves, whether they want to work closely with them. But Facebook, yes. Instagram, no. So your commerce manager and Facebook will only allow this to connect to your Facebook page instead of your Insta one. Thank you for that, Kelly. Um, so now we've looked at what these look like. Let's just say this is what we want to go with. What we would then do is publish it and make it viewable. Now to only to us, the changes are now visible in our shop only to us. We go then back out to our, let's see, exit to our dashboard, which we are now at. So we would then be able to go and maybe look at that account, but see if I've got it on maintenance mode here, that means it's not going to show to the to the public. So we can keep on designing and all that, but probably what you're going to do next is start to add more of your products, right? So you just keep on adding more products in here. So we'd add, okay, we've got the sandable candle. We're going to add a new one. We're going to make this one the um, uh, hand soap. We're going to sell hand soap. The soft formulation is friendly to hands and hard on dirt. Sounds like I'm writing an ad for, for a um, dishwashing liquid category. We're gonna call this one, not candles. We're gonna go to another one, out of there. Categories plus. I'm gonna add um, personal care. So once I add in personal care, that's now the new category. It's active. We're going to give it a price. We're going to say it's $15. Um, and then we'll add the shipping profiles default. So it's the same as the other one, unless we want to override that. So we might want to go, okay, we're going to keep that for the individual options. We're going to override that. So the individual options are going to be, um, this could be um, orange flavored or orange scented probably, um, lemon, lime, and then maybe bubble gum because, you know, kids are not going to like any of those other flavors. They're going to want bubble gum. So once we save that one, we've now got our second one. I've just got to get a photo from on the internet somewhere. So I'm going to call it hand wash. Now, naturally, you wouldn't be stealing photographs of other places, but we're just going to do that because that's what we've got the time to do. Uh, let's just find one that's actually square. That's going to fit what we're trying to fit. Um, Sukin, is that that's square? Save as Sukin. Let's go and load that up to our shop. Add the image. Remembering only one for the free account, five for the paid accounts. Save. So if we want to go back and look at our shop again to see what our shop looks like, it's now going to have two of these. So if we're going to, we're not going to launch our shop yet because we're not yet to that point we're going to look at the design of the shop and we get a bit of a preview of what that looks like now with two products there you go got two products and the shop now button comes in over the top now again if we want to go oh, not really the look we're looking for one another theme it will lose all our colors and choices but it won't lose our products so your products stay in a very separate separate section so let's just say we want to bring it over to the foundry theme it will then also just lay out our, our items like it is on the other one. But see, it's not, it's a bit more chaotic. It's not actually making the things the same size and line up. So that will depend on the theme you're using. So if we use the neat theme, for example, then that may show those products differently again. So it's kind of like a little bit, it's not playing with each of the photos to make them look neat and tidy with each other. Like it would say, for instance, our the lunar theme, the original theme, which does crop everything down to a square.
There you go. So you got everything to a square. So you'll just fiddle around pretty much with a theme you like, add the products you want, and always remembering the golden rule with Big Cartel, this is not the, the platform that's going to make you a million dollars. It's the platform that's going to launch you. So you just you, you get everything right first. So you work out all your shipping stuff. You work out all of the um, all the, the the kinks and 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 the and the dents in the armor that are going to sort of make things hard for you with this. And then once you've got everything sorted and you've got, you know, maybe a thousand bucks a month of stuff coming through and you go, I'm going to put aside $2,000 and I'm going to get someone to build me a really kick butt Shopify website because that's going to do the extra stuff I want it to do. That's when you do it. It's just called just, it's a very, very sensible way of building your business. You don't build the perfect thing. You build the thing that works. Um, and then, and, and hopefully your photography and your language and your, your copywriting skills will be what carries you through to that. So that's pretty much as complicated as it has to get with Big Cartel. It does all the usual things that shopping carts do, that shopping programs do, um, but it doesn't do everything. So for instance, you're not going to get all the feeds in from Australia Post, DHL and Toll for calculating automatically what your shipping is going to be. You need to set your shipping rate yourself. It's not going to uh, connect with all the social media things that you necessarily would want to do when you're a lot bigger, but at least we'll connect to Facebook. It's not going to give you uh, everything for free, but you can actually launch something with five different products. I've got two up there with lots of different variations to them. Um, you know, in the hand soap, I can look at that and go, okay, there's options I can have in, in not just the, the fragrance, but I can then also choose a size if I want to choose that. So it's the 500 mil one for $15. We can have like the 750 mil for, for $18 or something like that. So you can add lots of different variations to that. Most of us are not selling a lot of stuff. Most of us are just selling a few things. This is a good free option for that. Just a, a quick, um, uh, so Chris is asking if you recommend this for a digital product or as an online course, that this is primarily made for shipping. It's not made for download. So you would have noticed in the shipping area, which was usually the delivery mechanism, it, would, it won't then um, give you like a, a link through to go, oh yes, you're paid now, you can download your digital product. What you could do though, if you wanted, if you, you know, and this is for people who are not selling heaps and heaps and heaps of stuff. Um, it might be say, for instance, yes, I am selling a digital product. Let's say it's an ebook or I'm selling um, photography, then what you'll do, you would manually deliver that product. So they would get the receipt coming through from Stripe or from, um, from PayPal to say, yes, they've had the purchase and the receipt from your site to say, yes, you've made the purchase. You would get the order and then you would fulfill the order manually. So you go through then go in your orders each day. Okay. Oh, I sold 15 of that particular image. Um, so here's the orders. Um, uh, there's all the email addresses. I just email them then with the fulfilled order for that digital product. So whilst it's not great for delivering the digital product itself, it is a good way to sell it. And then you do the fulfillment yourself. It's not going to do the fulfillment for you. It, it's basically about a physical item, but you can make it work for a digital item as well, uh, particularly if they're digital artworks and that kind of thing. You can do it. You've just got to manually fulfill it through an email to the person to say, here's your product. Thank you very much for doing it. So there's not really much else I can show you with this because it's not a complicated system. If you wanted to say, for instance, they see what your, your, your site looks like on a phone, it will show you, you know, the layout on a phone as opposed to that. That's, I guess, another little thing you can do. You can flick between your pages. So for instance, ah, one thing I will show you, you've got a cart page, you've got a contact page, products and, and a particular product page. What you probably also want to do is add an about us page. And this is where it makes it into a, um, you can add other pages. So we're going to make this page the about page. So we're going to go, um, uh, we first formed our shop back in 1996 in Collingwood in Melbourne, but moved online when we moved to North Queensland. So it so just creates another page for you. And you can add in different things to this. So you've got, you know, just the about page is not going to let you do lots of photos and all that sort of thing. You can insert a photo here. So there you go. I'm going to put a photo, upload it from a source. Let's just say, um, I'm not going to use Gordon Ramsay. Maybe going to use give me a photo of me. God forbid. Here you go. It's not a photo of me, but it's a photo from my social media. So I can then insert a photo in the middle of that text. There you go, save. So let's put that photo in there. And you can continue on. So I can make that photo smaller just by you know, bringing it up a bit. It's not going to make it much smaller on the page though, because the page 
Um, there you go. Makes it a bit smaller. So you can make it show up. Obviously, try and do a wide photo there or a square photo. So it takes up the right kind of proportions within the site. But you can add that. It's not, this is not a big, like scary web builder. Like it's, you know, we can make it bigger to make that photo smaller. Go back down to the corner where it's this little thing. There you go. And I'll show you the smaller photo. This is not a website builder that's got lots of features. It's really going to be the simplest thing possible. You know, in Melbourne, you might want to add a link there to where the shop was. Um, a few more options in here, such as how to format your text, lists, that side sort of things. You can set a heading as well. Um, so under here, and here we can go where it began. And you may want that text to be a bit bigger. So you can highlight it and turn it into from text to header. So then it becomes a heading down there. So you can do a bit in here, but it's it's not really a replacement for a full website builder. It's not WordPress. Um, it, it's just something that allows you to build a few extra pages. So now we can see there's products about, we've got the about thing. And as you create more pages, you can then put them in order along here to see where you want that particular um, page to sit in order along the menu. Um, there's code you can go into if you want to sort of hack the template a little bit with CSS, um, but you need to upgrade to the, the paid um, version to update the theme code. So I can look at the default CSS code and make some changes in there. So I want to say, I know the background needs to be in the slider can be black instead of, you'd have to know what you're doing with HTML and CSS to do that. So I probably wouldn't recommend you do any of that, but it does allow you to make some changes in there. And then the rest of your settings on any page, including the about page, allows you to have a header image. So we want to put our header image in that we had before, which was this modern gold background one that I used before. It'll put in a header image in the top here any second now. There we go. Yeah, not really that impressive, really. It's just, it's only going to fit a certain amount of that particular page. So let's get rid of that, go back to where we were. Um, or you can have a slideshow you can create. So we can have a slideshow of several images. I'm sorry, but my images I'm going to choose are going to be just based upon the rubbish that's sitting in my downloads directory. So you can have up to five for free. Upgrade to the paid and you can have more pictures. Those slideshows are not something I really recommend you doing too much because um, they take a long time to load uh, and they really reduce the, the SEO ability of what you're doing. So I've done that, that slideshow. So where is it stuck it into? So I think it's the front page that sticks it to. Uh, where's my home page? Go info click. So somewhere it's decided to stick it. There you go. So this is the slideshow. It's just gigantic images. So what you want to do is use images that are of better size. You wouldn't use the ones I've used. You'd use wide images to fit in there. The SEO, Kelly, it's not really made for a lot of SEO. You can optimize your SEO just simply by um, using the same things you do on any shopping site, making sure that your, um, your products, so let me get out of here, publish and exit. There we go. So you would go into your products, exit I said. There we go, products. And then play with the, um, like for instance, hand soap. You might want to go into that a bit further. Hand soap, um, uh, fragrant, natural fragrance. Um, adding in extra things like organic, um, something like recyclable. So you can add in things to your titles and to your descriptions that will help you with SEO, but it's not necessarily that it's got an SEO platform within it. Not like Wix or WordPress where you can add Yoast or in Wix where you can update the SEO titles. What you're going to do to update your SEO titles, you have to do it in here in your product name and in your description. That's where your SEO titles are going to be. There's no separation between the two. Just another one of those little limitations about you know where you sit. Now, can a big cartel site rate high in SEO? Absolutely it can. Um, but if you're coming from scratch into a crowded market, you're never going to rank really well in SEO anyway, because there's you know 50,000 other stores selling what you sell who have come before you and have a lot more runs on the board. And that's just going to take forever for you to have any sort of impact. That said though, if you're coming into something new um, and you're coming into a brand new field where you're selling something that no one else sells and you've done a lot of promotion on social media through Facebook ads and people know who you are, 
then you're going to have the chance to show higher on SEO for that very specific search that you're getting for that specific product or that specific service that you do. Um, but in terms of does the platform itself naturally have your SEO stuff built in? Not really, not beyond just you using really clever copywriting to make sure that all the keywords you want to be found for are in your title of your product and your description. But there's nothing really about this platform that makes it less SEOable, if that's a word, than WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, or anyone else really. Um, it just comes down to the amount of traffic you can generate to come there. Um, always assume that you're not no one's going to find you on Google and work on the channels that are going to drive people to you that don't rely on Google. And then what happens over time, as you have that traffic, your Google ranking will go up naturally. Um, but trying to go from an SEO position from a very, very, like in a very, very broad market from a very, very small position is probably going to fail. Like there's a, a, an SEO expert here, they can do almost anything. That, they, that you'll find that in reality, they can't really take your skincare range, which is brand new and make it go to number one in Google because it just doesn't work that way. There's a hundred other brands, a thousand other products and a million other web pages that have been doing it longer than you and they have the natural advantage over you. SEO is a big mess. That's why I'm doing an SEO um, thing next month, which is all about basically the SEO things you can do yourself, depending on the platform you've got. So we take a broad look at it and go, here's the things that realistically that you can do and what kind of impact that will realistically have. And so you've got a reasonable expectation then um, rather than a... Um, you know, this, this expectation that you're going to go and fly to the moon and back on this one particular product that you've SEO'd yourself into. That's so just a very reasonable, very, very logical look at what you can achieve. 